Michael Patrick Shields is on the air. Good morning, world. Good morning, Michigan. A very pleasant hump day Wednesday to you. It's Michael Patrick Shields, the Speaker of the House, State of Michigan, Republican Jace Bolger from the Marshall area on the other end of our line. Good morning to you. Good morning, Mike Patrick. How are you? Thanks for being available on short notice. I know we're going to see you on Mackinac Island for the Detroit Regional Chamber Policy Conference, but I heard some scuttlebutt yesterday that Ted Nugent was down at the Capitol and you met with him. Uh, he sure was. What yeah. was that all about? Well, he's always entertaining. Uh, he's <laughs> certainly passionate. Uh, the House has a couple of bills. Actually, they're bills I sponsored last year uh, with Representative Tyler, and Representative Tyler is again sponsoring a bill of, as well as Rec Representative McBroom and working with Chair of our Agriculture Committee. Uh, Representative Kevin Daly, and they are looking to address the situation with uh, regard to sporting swine or hunting swine, mm -hmm. high fence hunts uh, that people have, uh, and Ted Nugent owns one, that have, uh, you think of deer or um, these are boars that they have available for hunts. It's big business to the people who own that, and uh, they bring in a lot of money from out of state. The DNR last year declared them an invasive species because some have gotten out. Uh, and so what this package would do would seek to regulate those who have these uh, to try to make sure that we, we don't have um, them running loose. They are a problem if they run loose. But uh, stop short of just eliminating the entire industry or the entire business. So wild boar are not necessarily wild. They are uh, penned into hunting areas. Is that what you're talking about? That's exactly right. Uh, they And the thing about uh, pigs are they'll go feral when they get out, even if they're the normal domestic pig that you think of. So a lot of times there are r reports of feral swine. Feral swine is swine that's out loose, and they will uh, – they quite often are normal agricultural swine that have gotten loose. Mm -hmm. Some uh, ha are the wild boar, the Russian boar, that uh, people were irresponsible with. Uh, but, again, the, the issue is that the, today that industry is not regulated at all, and it would be rare that I would want more regulation. But it does cause a problem if things are uh, out of control. So we're seeking to make sure that we can preserve this particular industry as well as protect the public safety and the safety of other agricultural businesses. Does, uh, when you say feral, does that mean they're, they're sort of diseased? Feral is wild. Uh, it does not necessarily mean diseased, but it's wild. And a mm -hmm. wild pig does a lot of damage. They root, uh, they tear up ground, uh, they can get diseased and transfer diseases. Uh, but again, when, when, when you visit a place, and uh, when actually when you visit some place like Ted Nugent's, you recognize that really they're running them like a farm. I mean, these, this is high-dollar business to them, so they don't want to see any pigs get out. They want to be sure that they're running, and they don't want to see anybody, any pig unhealthy. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're running a very reputable business, one that does care for uh, the control of those animals, and they want to make sure that those opportunities exist for hunters. So Ted was up making sure that he advocated for uh, businesses like the one he has. Um, you hunt a boar with a machete, is that right? <laughs> he may. Uh, Ted may, but uh, <laughs> most people do not. You know, what do they hunt him with, a gun? Gun, yes. Oh, really? I, I thought yeah. the deal was you stand. Somebody told me once that you stand there and you let the boar charge you, and then when it passes, you chop him with the machete. Uh, well, uh, not to my knowledge. Uh, oh. I certainly wouldn't volunteer for that. Uh, no. They can, especially the Russian boar with their tusks. Uh, they can be dangerous. Does, uh, uh, does Ted Nugent, when he shows up, or somebody like that at the Capitol, does it create a stir? It sure does. Sure, yeah. Um, he was out in our lobby uh, and was talking and available to representatives who had questions. Uh, it was a good old-fashioned citizen lobby, uh, and he had come in and uh, was available. Uh, many representatives went out and talked to him. He was around in the afternoon. I think he testified over in the Senate about uh, the state acquiring more state land. I think he was opposed to that. I believe private land offered more hunting opportunities. But he came up uh, just like any citizen would or could and talk to legislators about uh, issues pending in front of the legislature. You knew he was coming, though, I guess. Do they have to make special arrangements or, or not? I did know that he was coming uh, about 24 hours ahead of time. Uh, so we kn I knew that he would be there, but he was out in the lobby, like I say, just as any uh. other citizen might be. Uh, he did come visit a couple different offices at other parts in the day. As I say, he did go to uh, the Senate and testify there. But any citizen can do that. So mm -hmm. it's certainly, though, he, he garners a lot of attention and uh, a lot of media attention as well as uh, people in the Capitol. Yeah. I think some people who just happened to be wandering through on tours that day were surprised that Ted Nugent was standing in the lobby talking to legislators. He's been on this program uh, on the telephone, and, uh, I mean, he's, he's you, as you say, very passionate and extremely animated. Was he that way yesterday, too, or was he a little more reserved given the venue? 
He was actually a little bit more reserved. I've spoken to him on the phone uh, last session when I uh, sponsored a couple of these bills, and uh, I joked that I had an eight-minute conversation with him where I spoke about 30 seconds of it. Um, <laughs> he, he is very passionate about what he does and about what he believes. Uh, when I spoke to him yesterday, he was a little bit more reserved, uh, but uh, he just, he's got a way with words, and he's got a way of expressing his opinion that uh, you have no, no mistaking where he's coming from. All right, we know where you're, and now we also know where you're coming from. We know where you're going to, and we'll see you on Mackinac Island for the policy conference. I look forward to seeing you there, Michael Patrick. Thanks a million very much. That's the Speaker of the House, uh, Jace Bolger. Let's get a little bit of audio yesterday. Something historic happened while you slept. The final uh, mission of Endeavor, the space shuttle, came to a close after 19 years. That uh, the shuttlecraft will now be sent to a museum. It's made its last ever launch. And uh, here is uh, the... Uh, words from the Kennedy Space Center about the great legacy of the endeavor. It's sad to see her land for the last time, uh, but she really has a great legacy. That is from on board of the shuttle, and uh, NASA commentators welcomed Endeavor home after the touchdown. The fleet's youngest ship completing its 120 two millionth mile after its crew delivered an instrument to the International Space Station will sift through the cosmic darkness for years to come. Yeah, Commander Mark Kelly and pilot Greg Johnson. It was a textbook landing at about 2 in the morning all the way to wheel stop after a 6.5 million mile journey on this particular launch. So the workers there at Kennedy Space Center will get Endeavour ready for a museum. Meanwhile, their colleagues are getting Atlantis ready to fly the final shuttle mission which will be on July 8th, and this was how Mission Control welcomed home the Endeavor, the final message to the crew. Your landing ends a vibrant legacy for this amazing vehicle that will long be remembered. Welcome home, Endeavor. Welcome home, indeed. I've, I've seen probably, I don't know, eight, ten launches in Florida of uh, space shuttles. I've never seen a landing, though, except on television, and they all strike me. Obviously, the launches are very stirring. And by the way, I've seen lots of scrubs, too, where you go there and you get there early and you wait and the shuttle doesn't go off for one reason or another. But uh, the welcome home to the space shuttle, just as, uh, just as moving indeed, particularly when it's for the last time. Uh, do we have that clip of Ted Nugent on the program where he was uh, talking about having a venison-filled weekend? Not yet. We'll find it, though. He was, he was very animated when he was with us, too. Congressman Mike Rogers will be with us when we get back. We'll also talk to George Volman, the automotive insider, and Drew Stanton, the Lions quarterback who played for Michigan State, coming up all in this hour with Michael Patrick Shields. <laughs>